Auxiliary attachments. We're going to have a little rant here on AWS D1.1 and in pre-qualified there's a little paragraph that talks about auxiliary attachments. I'm going to go off on a little rant on that paragraph. In AWS D1.1 there's a paragraph there in Clause 3, Chapter 3, Clause 3 pre-qualified welding procedures. So you might have to attach like a clip or something like a, um, I don't know, some kind of auxiliary attachment. Let's say it's some kind of clip for holding up an electrical box or a conduit or something like that. It's not a main item of the structure. It's not a beam or a column, but it's something that's an auxiliary attachment. But it still might need to get welded at some point. So there's a provision in there that allows for the auxiliary attachments to be welded on to the other structures, the other components, with a pre-qualified welding procedure as long as the material has a chemistry that is pretty similar to one of the um, listed materials in table 3.1 of AWS D1.1 and we're going to kind of talk about that for a second. Okay if we go to and this is out of 2015 AWS D1.1 there's a paragraph in there 3.4 engineers approval for auxiliary attachments. Unlisted materials for auxiliary attachments which fall within the chemical composition range of a steel listed in Table 3.1 may be used in a pre-qualified WPS when approved by the engineer. The filler metal of Table 3.2 and a minimum preheat shall be in conformance with 3.5 based upon similar material strength and chemical composition. So what's that telling us? That's telling us that an unlisted material Let's say we've got a box, an electrical box that needs a clip welded on or some kind of, I don't know, whatever that's made out of an unlisted material. And then we can get some paperwork on it and it says it's some kind of Chinese material or a European material or a German material. Well, we've got to take that and then we've got to compare it with a steel that's listed in table 3.1. Okay, this is an example of what is not an auxiliary attachment. I figured we'd better go through and kind of um, give a couple of examples of what is an auxiliary attachment, or in my version of the universe, what's an auxiliary attachment and what isn't. So this is a, a beam, you know, connected to a couple of columns that's not an auxiliary attachment you can see I got all the force weighing down on it that is not an auxiliary attachment here I've got a couple other you know examples of what I would not deem as auxiliary attachments these are you know load bearing attachments these are structural members these are structural components these are not auxiliary attachments not so on the bottom one, that would not be an auxiliary attachment, but the one I've got circled in red up here with the clips for the electrical boxes, you know, just something that's, that's not a, a main part of the structure, that would be an auxiliary attachment. For our unlisted steel in this example, I'm going to use Q235. It's a plain carbon structural steel widely used in China. Um, it's from the Chinese standard GB slash T700. It's divided into four grades. And it's either a steel bar or a steel plate. So I'm just going to use this one as an, art, as an example. So, so on our paragraph, it said we need to be able to compare our Q235 to a material that's listed in Table 3.1 of AWS D1.1. So how do I do that? Well, the first thing I do is I do a good Google search. But a lot of times, if you've got the um, a good book, if you can find it, 
and it's in electronic form flo floating out there in the um, universe, is the Handbook of Comparative World Steel Standards. And it's got chemistries and tensile strengths and all that information. So you could do a quick search through this book and see where your chemical composition um, comes up in regards to the comparison to like an A36 or something. So in your spreadsheet, and I've probably explained this already, but we'll hit it again. Um, so you make a little sheet that has your, you know, let's say your, the material you're going to use, which might be an A36. This is we're gonna, what we're going to use for a comparison. And then we've got, you know, material X. So then we would go through and, you know, we would, you know, our little grid here, and we would compare them. All right, 2.5, carbon, whatever. It's pretty similar. It's not going to affect our weldability. Manganese, A36 says, you know, the max we can have is 1.2. Material X, let's say, is 1.4. Or we have, you know, phosphoruses and everything lines up. Where you're going to run into issues is if, and you can't do it, is if you had a material, let's say our material X had like a chrome or a nickel content that was, you know, A36 doesn't have anything in there. And let's say this one has 1.2% and 3% nickel. Well, obviously that doesn't fall within the range. So it's something that we need to keep in mind when we're doing this. It's got to be pretty close as far as I'm concerned. And it says within the range, but as long as you can justify it to the engineer and say, hey, this stuff is pretty much uh, a material that is pretty close to being a pre-qualified material, you're probably going to be able to get the engineer to agree with you on, a metal, on the metallurgy and a weldability standpoint for that material. I always make a chart. Get on to Excel and make a chart. You know, do the comparisons. Pull up the numbers, plug them in, and then go down through and, you know, compare them. All right, does this, one, does this make sense? Because odds are you're probably not going to get your material, your weird material, your unlisted material to match up exactly with an a, uh, AWS D1.1 pre-qualified material listed in table 3.1 but if it's in the ball game I guess me as an engineer as a professional engineer I'm gonna look at it as what's the weldability on this stuff is it pretty close that's what I'm looking at yeah can we weld it on there and it's not gonna just cause all kinds of issues can I justify it yeah this is this stuff's in the ball game it's pretty much a group one material that's what I would be looking at you know and maybe if you're in a nuclear situation at the Hanford nuclear site or Savannah River or something they might be a little more stringent but for the most part anything I've dealt with is it common sense comes into play how close is this material to what we're trying to weld and we're not asking to weld you know main structural members we're just talking auxiliary attachments here and here would be an example. I just made up some numbers here for the bottom one. You know, I've got material XXX 125. And I threw in, you know, a chrome of 125, a nickel of 3.5, and some molly at 275. That's not going to match up with any of our materials. So then I can't, in good faith and good conscience, I can't go to the engineer of record and say, yeah, this stuff's pretty close. You can see our chemistries are way out of bounds here. So, you know, you, you, you got to, and, and it's how you present it to them, too, you know. Then you just write a letter. You write a letter, put your spreadsheet in there, you comparing the two, you know, sign it, date it, give them all the information and say, hey, this is what we're planning on doing. Keep a copy for yourself and then uh, wait for them to kick you back an email or a letter saying yes or no. And then you go from there. Questions, comments, concerns, um, Gary Pace, PECWI, Katie, Texas, TexasWeldingEngineering.com.